Knowing how to get the intersection of two arrays is helpful both in programming interviews as well as day-to-day -day software engineering. In this tutorial, I'll show you three different ways of finding the intersection and we'll dive into a ton of examples. Welcome to Algo Daily. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jake from Algo Daily again, and today we're covering array intersection. Now, as I've mentioned before, array intersection, or rather finding the intersection of two input arrays is actually a very useful and extremely common interview problem as well as technique for day-to-day -day software engineering. It's very useful. You'll have many times in your professional career where you're given two inputs and they may be in array format. They could be in some other format, but you need to find the things that they have in common. And so in this example, we have two array blocks symbolized by these uh, rectangles over here. And so you can see that the first block has green, orange, blue, and red as elements. And then the second block has black, green, red, and purple as elements. And if we want to define the intersection of these two arrays, you can see that they are green, which both appear here, and red, which both appear. And this is our output. So if we think through how we knew that green and red were the intersection of these two, we basically started at one of them and then checked for it in the second one. Let's explore that pattern a little bit more with another example. So what if we had two very basic arrays? Let's say array one, which just contains one, and array two, which also just contains one. Well, if we look at one, we'll start off here and then we compare it with the elements of two, we'll see that one was in the first one, the first array, and it was also in the second array. So the intersection is clearly just one. So if we were to expand this a little bit though, and had array one contain both one and two as elements, and array two just contain one, well, Let's go through that pattern again. So we start at one. We see that it's an array two. We'll probably add it to a results array. Then we'll look at two and we'll see if two is in array two. And it is not. So thus we know that our only intersection then is one. So let's look at another example. So here we have J-A-K-E, and in the other array we have S-T-E-A-K. Now we start at J, it's not in array number two. Then we go to A, and we see that it is here. And so let's record that. Then we go to K, we see that K is also here, we'll record that. And then at E, we see it's also in inclusive. So let's record that. We've discovered a pattern for solving this problem. Essentially, we can have two for loops. We can have an outer for loop that iterates through each element of the first array. And then at each element, we'll then iterate through the elements of the second array and look to see if there's a match. So the runtime complexity of this method is O of n squared because we have an outer loop. So we have to iterate through all of the elements of the outer loop, but then at each iteration, we then have to also iterate through all the elements of the second array as well. Can we do this a little bit faster? So there is another way to accomplish this, which we'll cover via code. 
So essentially, we can just use set theory. Using sets, using sets, we can find the intersection of two sets pretty easily with just one operation. Sets are an object type in most languages that allow you to store unique values of most primitives with the keyword being unique. Sets cannot have duplicates. We transform the first one into a set. Then we take the second array and we filter it by the elements that appear within that first set. And then this itself is wrapped as a set in order to make sure we're deduped. And just putting them into two sets already dedupes and ensures that we get the intersection. Then we transform it back into an array because that's what the problem expects. Then there's a third way to do this. What we can do is use the property of hash maps that keys are unique. What we can do is iterate through the first set, see if it's in nums too, and then just set it as a key in a hash. By setting it as a key in a hash, we effectively dedupe it. And as a result, we're able to get the intersection using object.keys, which gives us back an array. And then in this case, we do a little bit of parsing to make it back into an integer.